spot work. Oh, wait, maybe they didn't. Ooh, y'all hold up. Let us get through, please. Little rascals in the house. I feel like it's Corona in the crowd. It's a, cor it's a what? Corona in the crowd. It's a Corona out there? That's a home day, so we don't need the room. It's still out of the way line? Yeah, I'm lying. result of the decisions made by our city's leadership. I have asked myself multiple times what would have been done if, my, if it was your child. Firstly, I'm deeply concerned that fireworks are allowed within the city limits, the chaos and unpredictability that fireworks bring quickly turn what should be a joy occasion into something dangerous. The environment created on July the 4th was with explosions and crowds contributed to the circumstances that led to My son being assaulted and sustaining a traumatic brain injury, as well as a young lady whose hair caught on fire due to chaos and unlawful acts. Therefore, she had to go to the emergency room as well. Secondly, I want to address the lack of a sufficient police cross presence during those events. With the increased risk that comes with large gatherings and the use of fireworks, your city should have been better prepared. You knew that this event was coming up, but still allowed it to happen. Plus, you were not prepared. The absence of an, any adequate police force not only failed to prevent the assault on my son, but also left your community vulnerable. And finally, I must express my disappointment that despite the severity of this incident, I have not been contacted by you, Mayor Cochran. As a parent, I expected some acknowledgement, maybe some indication that you actually care, even our city leadership, about the well-being of others. Doesn't matter if they are, they are or not part of the community. He was there on y'all's watch. Your silence in this matter has been disheartening and disappointing. So I ask you, Mayor Cochran and the city council members, what are your intentions moving forward? How do you plan to address the safety concerns that have been so clearly exposed? Will you reassess the decision to allow fireworks within the city limits? Will you ensure that our police department is adequately staffed and prepared to stop these unlawful events and most importantly will you make it a priority to reach out to families like mine who are suffering as a result of these shortcomings your city deserves better it's time to take action to protect your community and to ensure that no other family has to endure what mine has to let y'all know my child is talking he is walking but it's going to take him a year before he'll ever be the same he has lost his right leg. He's, he's using it, but he has lost his strength in that leg. He does not remember anything prior to the accident. He does not remember anything that happened. To this day, only one person has been arrested. He bonded out. $15,000 bond. I know y'all have no, y'all don't have a say so who sets that, but I'm disappointed in our judge for someone that is aggravated assault with the intention to harm my child. He knew exactly what he was doing. They knew exactly what they were doing to my child. They knew when they walked up to him and hit him from behind, they knew exactly what their intentions were. He got out on a $1,500 bond. That's disheartening for a family that you see your child laying in a bed, he's got teeth down his throat, he's not awake. This is just very disheartening. He's an 18 year old child. <clears throat> he should be out enjoying his life. God has given laws and guidelines for enforcement and has always given humans the responsibility for enforcing the law. Anyone who puts themselves in a position to be part of the law is what God calls his watchmen, armed guards, and judges. It says, appoint judges and officials for yourselves from each of your tribes and all the towns the Lord your God has given you. They must judge the people fairly. It doesn't matter how much money you have or where you come from, fairly. You must never twist justice or show partiality. 
Never accept a bribe, for bribes blind the eyes of the wise and corrupt the decisions of the godly. Let true justice prevail. So you may live and occupy the land that the Lord your God has given you. That's in Deuteronomy 18.20. And God, I don't, mean, I don't mean to bring church into here, but when you're called to, to represent your community, it is your job to protect your community. It doesn't matter if they're just here visiting, they're there for, it doesn't matter. God is telling you to endure the fall of justice and justice alone. So this command implies the necessity of law enforcement. God has always given the responsibility of enforcing the law. He tells us to defend the weak and the fatherless, uphold the cause of the poor and the oppressed, rescue the weak and the needy, deliver them from the hand of the wicked. That night, my son was assaulted by the wicked. I know exactly what they were doing. Therefore, a Christian involved in law enforcement or police work is doing a good and godly thing. That's why he's placed you there. The police officer who enforces the just law of the land should consider himself or herself God's servant and toward the lawbreaker, an agent of God's <coughs> wrath sent to keep the peace. One of the most important jobs that every police officer, city member, out of law, just anyone, mayor, anyone, is, is, is the restraint of evil in society. And I understand we deal with evil every day, no matter where you're at. It's a, it is a dangerous career. I have family that are in the law. I do. It is a very dangerous career. I understand that. It's a noble calling as well. And it's a profession congruent with a biblical desire for justice and righteousness. Psalm Romans 13 tells us that we deal with submission to government authorities and the same passage is instructive on the purpose of law enforcement and police work. Rulers hold no terror for those who do right and for those who do wrong. The one in authority is God's servant for your good. But if you do wrong, be afraid, for rulers do not bear the sword for no reason. So God gave you a gift. Use that gift. If you're not here to use the gift, then I'm going to tell you find another profession and find somewhere else to go. Because you're not doing any, you're not helping your community. Or this community, they need to feel comfortable here. They need to feel safe here. They need to know that when an event like this happens, that they can take their family to this and they're not afraid that the fireworks are going to be thrown out. This is not the first time this has happened. Two years ago, someone got shot in an event like that. I've done the homework. Two years ago, someone got shot in their own home. Sad. You wouldn't think like that, something like that would happen in a small community like this. But they're supposed to be, you're supposed to feel safe. I, you know, and right now, I can imagine what, how people are feeling. Some people maybe feel like they came to walk out their front door on that side of town. That's crazy. They are God's servants, agents of wrath to bring punishment on the wrongdoer. Police officers or peace officers represent the rulers mentioned in this passage and extend their authority. Use it. That's why God gave it to you. It disappoints me that I've only had one person reach out to me. I'm not asking for anything. I don't need your money. I don't need your gifts. I don't need anything like that. But the point of is that my son is still in rehab. And we don't know what the outcome is going to be when he comes home. Is he going to be the same? Is he going to lose? Still not remember? It's a process. He's on medications that no 18 year old should ever have to be on. He's on medications that someone my age should be on. He's a very independent young man. And this is killing him because he cannot process all of this. All I ask is that y'all think about your community. Think about why do we have to have fireworks? If you're going to do something, why can't you do something that's that's more safe? 8 to 12, got to go at 12. Can't. Buy the ticket, put them in jail. They'll get tired of it. They will. It's just, and I understand that other cities do it. They do. But if you go back, you will see that it's a more done in a professional way. So all I ask is that you think about this. Thank you. Now, what's your name? My name's Brandy. Brandy? Yes. And you live in Italy, Texas? Yes, I just moved here. You just moved here? Yeah. Okay. I have family that lives here. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. We'll move down to line um, seven, which is uh, council member comments. And I will start with Mr. Rosen. I want to thank everybody that's here tonight. Thank you very much for being here, and thank you for expressing your concerns. And um, I want to thank all the department heads that put all this together. 
how can we plan for the budget? Um, I've got a big concern tonight. I want, I don't understand why, but I, I don't find it out why certain citizens are allowed to comment on agenda items and then other, other council members are not. It just seems like a pick and choose and it should be fair for everyone. And I also don't think it's right that we have citizens that sign up to speak for three minutes or if somebody gives them their minutes, they have their time. We're not allowed, they're not allowed to interrupt us. We shouldn't be allowed as council members or our mayor to interrupt them. So I think we need to look into that. And well, you can look into it all you want, but I'm, 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 I'm the uh, moderator of this meeting and I move it. I, I move the meeting forward the way I decided. And you're interrupting me right now. Order. You're also interrupting me right now. Yeah. Remember you, that's yeah, all and I'm, I'm you telling you that because you, you're making a statement about me and I'm sitting right here. So, so you said you don't want the mayor to interrupt anybody. Like the mayor is responsible for managing this meeting. That there are Period. rules that say that they had their three minutes to speak. He spoke for nine minutes, but because people I didn't interrupt him from speaking. Speaking, and that's what I'm saying. I don't entertain ignorance, but I will address it because that's flat ignorance. Well, so it's not the ignorant. fact that break the rules. No, this dude cussed this man out. And I stopped him from talking. And you talking about me not interrupting? Somebody. I'm talking about the whole council. Anyway, finish your comments. Focus. You should Finish have to me in the first place. Finish you your comments. You messed up by doing that. No, I'm going to interrupt you again if you say something stupid like that again. No, you're saying stupid stuff right now. That's flat right, stupid. This dude cussed the, my this dude the police chief out. And I addressed him and told him that he's going to carry himself. I didn't hear anybody is. cuss out the police chief. Well, he's talking and cussing. He said the F word in the middle of our meeting. Okay. And we just got done praying. This lady just got done speaking about Deuteronomy and all the verses in the Bible. But we got in her cussing toward an elect, I mean, uh, toward an official. Come on, yeah, come on. We don't need to break the rules. Anyway, go on with your. Uh, uh, yeah, I tried to. You're you interrupting me. Go on with your presentation. Oh. Are you through interrupting? No, you do talking. Wait, no, I'm not through talking. Yeah, you are. No, I'm not. You no, are. I'm not. I want to thank Brandy for you being here talk. and for yeah, having the courage to talk about no, your no. son because I brought this up at the last meeting and that's why they're upset at me right now. And that should have never happened. And I, you can see now what this is all about. That's why this is all happening because people don't want to be called out. And I thank you for your courage to stand up tonight. And I thank Ron Helms for your courage to stand up tonight. And we need more of that. We need more transparency, like I've said all along. Thank you. All right. I would like to thank uh, all the citizens for being here tonight. Um, of course, I'd like to thank all of our department heads uh, and everyone who spoke. Um, I would like to apologize to uh, Miss Brandy, uh, for not reaching out myself. Uh, it's terrible what has happened and what you're going through. Uh, I do believe we need to do something about that situation. So I will do my best to be involved in that. That's all I got. Yeah, I do want to make it known I have reached out to Brandy several times. I'm the one she was talking about. And I do promise you I'm going to do my best <coughs> to make sure this never happens again to anyone else. Thank you everyone for coming. Department is for all you do. We have a lot to say. Hold on, you two. Take your time. Take your time. I have a lot to say. I'd like to thank the uh, council, the mayor, uh, city employees, police department, public work, and thank to all the citizens that come out this evening uh, and the comments this evening and concerns and what we need to do and we need to help improve. Uh, I know the city, the city is doing their best to fix problems within the city. You know, it, the city's budget, you see all the things that the city do, all the important what they do, they do a lot. It's a lot of things that need to be done. It's a lot of procedures, a lot of numbers they gotta take care of. And, and we appreciate them for doing that. And they work hard at that. And now they're not, here of doing anything, but they're working hard at what they're doing to make the city better, to make the city better. And, and if we could continue to do our best as councilmen to work for the city and do the best and help to help the mayor, support the mayor. And we show the highest respect to the mayor. I show the highest respect to the council. I show the highest respect to the citizen. It's all about respect each other. You call don't call each other out, respect each other. You know, when your time to speak, speak. Respect each other though, to the highest the highest respect in the community. Uh, and as we talk about the business of the city, you know, everyone, everyone had a lot of, there's a lot of new changes, a lot of new changes going on. 
new things doing in the city of Philly. You can see the new things happening, new property, new stores, new things coming up. And I commend the mayor and city council and all the employees and the city of Philly for, for, for uh, you know for allowing these things to come in and being at the meetings, being at the meetings that you're showing your concern. And we hope and pray and thank you, man. Thank you very much. I don't know. I don't know you lived in Italy. I, your son, your son was hurt. I know you lived in. I live. You live in a coast where I live at. And we're praying for you. Thank you for your words and your words that you spoke about your son. We're sorry it happened. I know we're sorry it happened. How, how it went down like that. But we'll continue to pray for you and your son and your family. You know, because we all need. Well, we hate to see that happen like that in, in the city of Italy. And so we hope for board members. And and I said like the meeting for the city council. We are, we are transparent. I don't know why people say we're not transparent. We are transparent. The meat's on the back of Waterville. The meat's on the, on the side of there. We are, uh, uh, the guys put the meat's on the Illich Hall page. That's so we are transparent. We are transparent. You know, and, and, and I know we try to be more transparent. You know, we, we, we can't knock on doors, but we do have it out where people can see you know, that we are having the meat on their posting. Now, I know they've been posted, y'all been posting on, on the social media, but they are transparent. We do, I, to me, I think we do a good job of transparency in the meeting that. Uh, again, I just, uh, I know we, I know we, uh, we uh, as, a, as a city council, continue trying to work things out and do, do, do things better for the city. But I'm not old man anymore. Anyone can talk to me. I don't have no problem talking to me. So I'm in the public eye. I'm in public eye all the time, all the time. What I do, my other job I do, I get video, I get, I get video, I get everything. I'm in, I'm in front of thousands of people all the time, so it don't, it don't, it don't bother me to be in the public eye. I grip the teeth, I grip the teeth, I grip the teeth every time I'm on the field or the court. So, you know, so it's, it's just something that, it's just thing that, I, I if anyone wants to talk to me and want to have concerns, come talk to me. I'm very. Christian young man, and I, I old ain't young, old man. <laughs> so I, I, but I just thank y'all for coming out. God bless you, one of, each one of y'all. Thank y'all for coming out and showing your concern. Thank you again for counseling the mayor and all the city folks. Appreciate everything y'all do. Thank you very much. All right. God bless you. Again, I want to remind everybody that I really try my best not to get any ignorance, uh, but I do address it. And, uh, but before I even go further in that, uh, Ms. Brady, I don't know you from Adam, and I'm sure that you know that anytime someone goes into the hospital or something like that, you can't, just a random person can't go and find out what's going on with that person. But even when I coordinate with the chief, he doesn't even know specifics about it. He just knows that he visited with you guys, and he wouldn't tell you nothing about what's going on with your son. But I didn't know you, I, don't, I, I just met you tonight. I would have never knew you had you not came tonight. I don't know how to get in contact with you, and I don't know your son at all. Didn't know you lived in Italy. I don't know how long you been living in Italy. But anyway, the point I'm trying to make is that between HIPAA laws and other people being private about their situations, I'm just a random person. Nobody's gonna give me information about you or your son. But that's that. Uh, but I will tell you this: is that even as you stood here and you quoted scriptures and stuff like that, if you believe what you just said. You already know that it's the grace of God that has blessed him to be as stable as he is right now because plenty of people have been praying for him. They can even pray up here. But, uh, so, nothing I can do or say to change that besides prayer. His growth, I'm saying, the positive growth. But anyway, uh, Ron Helms, came up here and he uh, he did a little spill on what he wanted to talk about. And I don't know if y'all heard him, but he said that he met with me face to face. And he did. Ron Allen texted me on July 28th while I was in church. He said, hey, can I meet with you today? Or sometime, can you meet me in Walsh Hatch or Worcester County? As soon as I got out of church, I texted him, hey man, I just got out of church. Meet me in Walsh Hatch right now at five o'clock. I'm glad he mentioned that actually. Because he also mentioned that he's got uh, a news station that's going to be Italy News. But I would warn people to be careful about listening to that news because he lies a lot. He lies a lot. 
I don't like So he posted on Facebook that that I took some land from his parents or his grandmother illegally. And when he came to the I meeting, never said illegally. He, hey, you, this, this is my turn. Don't, never don't said illegally. This is, this is my That's turn. That's a lie. I never said illegally. You, you ready to leave or you want to enjoy this meeting? Hey, just thinking. Anyway, so he said that I, I took some land from him. And I purchased land from his family. His dad and five of his siblings signed off on it. So when he met me with this, at this meeting, this is why I'm telling you how the people sit up and lie on Facebook and people are just dive into it. Now, so I'm glad he mentioned it. So he met me at this meeting and I asked him specifically, why would you lie on me on Facebook? You actually and, didn't. And he said, you never said that and your wife was there. And I said also to him, I said, why do you, why are you saying all this stuff to me, I mean, about me on Facebook and you never talk to me like that in person? You know what he told me? He said, you got to create some trauma to get people to pay attention. That's the exact word. Absolutely did. <laughs> anyway, so just so since I told y'all that, you're going to know he's a liar. Because what you can do is I asked him, I said, why didn't you go get the contract? Because he said, well, I said that you stole my land because. Never you, said that, man. You, you, my, do my, not my, lie. I never said you stole my land. Janice is the only person that signed off on it. I said, man, I don't know you want Janice. Never said that. Look at the public. I record. don't know you want Janice. So I said, go get the contract that was signed and the money was transferred and see who all signed it. Six people signed it. And you lied on me on Facebook. I did not so, lie. Well, show me. So I just go and clear that up. Because the thing is, I don't waste my time. Entertaining ignorance, especially on Facebook, because people are lying and defaming people's name all the time on Facebook. But I thank God that He asked me to meet with them face to face and talk to me man to man, so I can tell them what I just told y'all. So y'all can go pull it too. Uh, Town Square Title did the did the contract, so go ask them. You can get this public record. Went into my aunt's name for so two days, anyway, immediately transferred to him. Anyway, uh, that's one lie. I won't tell you all the lies I just told, but I will record. address one more thing, and that is again. People got this social media platform and they just say anything they want and people just dive in as if they're stating facts. And it's almost never facts. If you don't believe me, go pull a contract when I purchased their land and see that six people signed off on the land on Waco Street. And you'll see Do it went into my aunt's name Do for two it. days and transferred Do it two days later. So anyway. Mayor, did you have anything else uh, that he said that you don't agree with? Anyway. Uh, how, about, how about the comment that he said, I look like Jesus and I'm, I'm hey, interestingly around the age that he died. Hey, you want to talk about that? Let's talk about that one. It's not going to lead you. you. You can leave, dude. This is my turn to talk. I'm not going back forward with audience. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm not going back forward with audience. This is my turn to talk. <clears throat> Um, so, for years, for years, this exact same thing has been going on, and people are coming here fussing at these council members and arguing and cussing at them and just saying, I rate stuff, and without facts, for years, and I never want to address it. I never said anything. I was like, hey, <coughs> thank you for your comments. But when you start talking to me, and I'm going to waste my money to get an attorney to deal with you for defaming my name. No, I'm going to address it right here. Just like you brought in here to talk to me about it. So, well, you just threw him out. Anyway, I addressed it. I'm doing what I did. I'm going to throw you out. If you keep on talking about it, I'm talking. Okay. Anyway, uh, I really wanted to just clear it up because that's a lie that you can go get the paperwork and see that I'm telling you the truth. But y'all saw me post it on Facebook that I took his family land illegally. So, but that's just one. I can go on and on, but I don't want to waste too much more time. Because that's just enough. Because that, that right there, I got receipts for it. I mean, you got receipts for it too, because it's public knowledge. We have to get past tearing each other down over and over and over again. It's exhausting. Every every time I look up, somebody's talking bad about the, the city hall, they're talking bad about the police chief. They talk. And the thing is, we can't be good unless we work together. Citizens, the city hall, the police, everybody, we gotta work together. We're not gonna be good if we don't. That's what I'm playing. Otherwise, 
I, I wouldn't even be here. If, if I wasn't here to be part of the solution, I wouldn't waste my time here. I got a thousand other things I could be doing. I got a whole three businesses to run. And I'm up here giving the city my time. Check the record. You can, you can get the receipts on that too. Giving them my time. And this ain't the time, the only time I give. I, I spend time up here at night. Anyway. Um, that's a lot. But I can tell you right now, and I want to tell the council right now, that even what I just mentioned right now, this guy lying on me, I believe that there's some people that really know me that actually believe him. And I told him that. I said, boy, I've been living in this city for 51 years. Everybody that really, from every, they know me. They know my character, they know my track record. I lived here for 51 years. I was born and raised here. So, so what he also told me is that, you know what, these bombs, they're really not aimed at you. They really, it's just some other people going in the city and you need to get out of there before you're part of the, the big thing that's fixing to come down and the city's going to be sued. You know what I told him? I said, I don't care about the city being sued. My character speaks for itself. I'm good. I'm not throwing rocks out of my hand. I'm good. And I stand on that. That's why I told him straight up. Yeah. Because I'm tired of this foolishness. I'm tired of it. I wasn't ever going to even say anything about it. Anyway. That's a lot. But what I want you guys to know is that as a council, as a city, as a police department, I promise you, as long as I'm here, I'm standing behind you. I don't care what this is going on social media and what people stand up here and say because I know that we're doing our, our best to do exactly what's right. And the same thing I told him, I said, if we did something wrong, if we do something wrong, we, and, we are, and we find out that we are, we address it. Nobody's perfect. Somebody can do something wrong. We address it. Nobody's throwing rocks in our hands. So, whatever you're going to do, do it. Because I'm going to be good. The city going to be good because we ain't doing nothing. But what's right why do you think we spend all this money on getting other people to show us when we vary off the course? Like we spend all this freaking money to bring a, a, a guy in and help us with our developments so we wouldn't make the mistake of letting somebody try to put a robe beside somebody's house. We're doing everything we can to do right and people still stood up or standing up and saying that we're doing wrong, we're hiding things. I'm sick of it. I'm sick of it. But again, to be honest with you, it's a small group of people doing that. Yes. But it's some ignorant people trying to build a base and make that group bigger. So about 95% of the people don't feel the same way as those people feel. Right. Tell right. you, this right. is a fact. <laughs> this is a fact. Yes, you are right. So that being said, I want to say to the council to be encouraged. I want to say to uh, Amber, the city hall, the police department, the water department, to be encouraged, man. Because um, people are going to always talk down, you know, or, or have something they want to say. But we just seem to have more focus on that and never, ever, ever work, focusing on working together and just making things better. But even for you, Jim, I know it's a lot, man. I know. Sure, you. I know it's a lot. I work for the city of Dallas. And they had. A straight up, they have a department, it's nothing but streets. Thousand plus people working in the streets department in Dallas. And the people still complain about the streets not being fixed. <laughs> and they got concrete machines, they got yeah. asphalt machines, they got rippers and zippers and all this stuff. And people still complain about the streets not being repaired. I'm just like crazy complaining. I go up there five days a week and it's bottles that are being the ones that get attention. There's no justification for us to have bottles, but what I'm saying is that if you took all the resources you had at our 
for the worst part, and just worked on streets for the rest of the year, you still wouldn't be able to keep up with keeping those streets perfect to where nobody would ever see it. You wouldn't be able to do it. So what you have to do is you have to do what you can on purpose. Do what you can on purpose and keep moving. And answer people's question when they ask you a question. If you have to answer to it, if you don't, give it to them later. But don't worry about what saying. You got to let it be like water on a dust patch. There will always be some fools there. And we'll say anything like it's the gospel. And people will jump on it. But it's a small few. But if, you, if you're not careful, you let that small few discourage you to the level that you don't want to do your job anymore. Don't, don't do that, man. Chief, don't do that. Don't do that. Just know that the majority of this council backs you. No, we back you. I got you all. We back you. And we all gonna do what's right. That's enough. Oh, we standing down next year, baby. We should have been all the way down.